He says you belong in the circus. Now, <laughs> yes. not for any rude reasons, but he says you can juggle very well and you could ride a unicycle. Can you do both at the same time, though? Yeah, I can. Holy <laughs> shit. This kid's the real deal. Give him the MVP. <laughs> what is what is the beginning of you riding a unicycle and being able to juggle as well as doing it together? Like, yes. How did that all start? How old are you when that goes down? Yeah, um, how old was I? Uh, out of the womb. <laughs> out of yeah, two years old. No, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe twelve, thirteen. My dad was very good at uh, going in unicycle, and he. I was listening to him a lot. I still do. Uh, and um, he told me, if you get good at the uh, unicycle, you're going to have better balance at hockey. And I was like, all right. I uh, worked on it, uh, got good at it. And then I don't know why, but I just start juggling. So one day I had three tennis balls. I spent like three, four days at our backyard back home in Onge, where I'm from. And I spent three, four hours until I could do it. And then once I get good at it, I started started doing with bowling pins <laughs> yeah i mean you're gonna be like the red panda at the rogers center between periods <laughs> they're gonna have to pay you 20 million a year all right i'm up for it <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would be unbelievable the first ever player in nhl history to do the in between period uh entertainment yeah no so got good it with bowling pins and then i added both together and uh, yeah my uh, my brother always chirped me about it that I could join a circus whenever. So I'm, yeah, I'm set. <laughs> so you mentioned your dad, and he drove a Zamboni when you were a kid. So you basically just skated every single day as much as you wanted as a kid, hey? Yeah, I've been skating a lot. Um, I mean, I come from a small town or village. I don't know how you say it. It's, it's uh, three three thousand people lives there, so it's not big at all. Um, so yeah, no, dad has drove the Zamboni, had the key to every door at the rink, and uh, basically all my childhood it was school. Dad dropped me off at at the rink, got home, had dinner, then back to the rink for practice and uh, bedtime, and then same thing all over again. So that's that's in the winter. Are you summers off, or are you skating the whole time? Uh, summers it was soccer growing up. Yeah. Uh, uh, but as soon as the ice got back back home, I uh, I was there right away. But uh, yeah, I played soccer and uh, and hockey growing up. So do you follow all the drama in the in the, the British Premier League and all these uh, high end soccer uh, leagues? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm a I'm a big fan of soccer uh, and I watch it a lot. I don't have a I don't follow it a lot nowadays because time difference and everything and. I don't have a favorite team, so I'm just a fan of the sport, not a okay. fan of anything. Well, you're your typical typical Swede that sp- speaks perfect English, and I know you guys take it growing up. Was it was it a little difficult for you two years ago, your rookie year? Have you pretty pretty much been completely uh, easy easy speaking English for a while now? Um, I was I was okay in English at school. I mean, I did like. Uh, like high school my only mindset was I'm gonna do everything to pass the test because I wanna <laughs> because I wanna play hockey and uh, that's what the reporters need yeah exactly <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't listen kids uh, yeah same here but I never passed <laughs> or got asked to be interviewed <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know so so I think actually Brock Besser can tell you guys a story whenever you guys get that opportunity because uh, my first development camp, I was not good at English at all. Like, uh, and he has a pretty funny story when he's basically telling me that I kind of like shrug him off and didn't want to talk to him because I was nervous talking about it because I wasn't uh, comfortable talking English yet. So, but um, I've learned it quickly, uh, like moving here, here English and every day. So. Petey, when you were a younger kid, were there any Swedes that you modeled your game after? I mean, you, you could score and pass equally good. I mean, I would say Peter Forsberg. I know he had probably a little more grit to his game, but who did you model yeah. yourself after? Uh, first one was Peter Forsberg. Um, just remember his old, old days back in Modo where 
where Ryan played for two games. Uh, it was a very <laughs> successful two games. I don't know if you've seen the I actually, stats. I, I, I actually had the privilege to see your last game in your career. Wow. Oh, my That's God. Crazy. That was the – so you saw the last period. You were at that game. Yeah, you remember the game? Uh, I do. I remember. Let me guess: about... two pizzas, dash three, absolute liability <laughs> in, in his own end. First, but he did have a second period. assist on the power play, no, so dude. he was thrilled. He watched dash three. That's for sure. No <laughs> fun, I was dash. I was dash three in the first period, and oh. one of them. And one of them, I went to turn, and my ankle completely gave out, and I hit the side of the skate, and I fell, and the guy grabbed it and threw it in front. It was like. It was like a legit, like at the whole first home game of the season, I'm an import. We yeah. lost like to the night before we got waxed the night before on the road and I'm horrific. And I went into, and I retired after that period, the first period. And then I sat on the bench for the second and third. So we watched the game together. My last pro game, I just got to, to play like eight of 20 minutes, be dash three and throw a pizza. Against the worst team in the league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah it so was you're... not exactly a great performance for uh the old wit dog in this shl i might have i might have asked my brother for a little background check because yeah, okay so you were doing some prep work for this so podcast was, where was your brother playing then is he is he in vax show now yeah he's in vax now uh the team i played for before vancouver well, actually, before that, I want to ask you, you played for Timra for a year because my best friend, Matt Murley, played for Timra for a while. Yeah. And he uh, he lives in Sunsville. He loved it. He married a girl from there. And he told me that it was so big when when he was playing there to try to get up to the SHL, right? Like your division yeah. two. And, and so I saw that you played the one year, you lit it up, and you guys weren't able to advance into the into the big league. Say you had, and instead you went to Vaxor or signed. Say you had gotten Timra in, would you have stayed with them that year? Or would you, or were you moving on no matter what? Uh, that was a talk I had like all the time, like during the season with my agent, with friends, with family, my brother. Uh, I, th yeah, I'm pretty sure I would have stayed because Timra is close to home. Uh, it's where I have my, I played there for five years. And you would have gotten them there. It would have been like that much more special, I, I, I would guess. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, no, things didn't go the way I wanted. I'm, I'm happy with the with my year in Vecqua, but uh, it would be cool to to bring Tamer up and play uh, one year in SHL there.